Okay, here we are again. <laughs> we Today are. is December 13th. Yes. And uh, we're almost we're there. Just, yeah, we're almost there. You know, I just encourage you, you know, uh, you probably hear this a lot, but um, think about helping others during this time. You know, Christmas to me is all about giving because God gave his son, gave yeah. us his only uh, begotten son for for us, the greatest gift that we could ever get. And uh, so think about other people, you know, especially if you're in a position to uh, help others, maybe a ministry that you're familiar with that, uh, um, that you could help you know, give a little extra to, or if you know of a family that's struggling or somebody mm -hmm. that's, uh, you know, having a difficult time, why, um, I encourage you to uh, be generous yeah. this Christmas season, not just with your own family, but with, yeah. with others too. And uh, anyway, that's and if, just... If you need to, uh, to know who to contact, I'd say contact Amberly's Place. Mm -hmm. or the Salvation Army, yeah. or one of those, oh. one of those uh, groups that um, gives... A crossroad mission. Crossroads, you know, there's a lot yes. of A lot of ministries that if you don't yeah. know people yourself that are in need, why mm -hmm. there's, there's a lot of uh, organizations that can, that can oh, direct you yes. or, or uh, yes. help you to, to be generous with other yeah, people. you never know who's out there so, that might need that's help true. in hand. And I don't know, it's just such a good feeling when you're able to help somebody that you it know is. is in need. So, anyway. Even the people out on the street. You yeah, know, when you go to Walmart, true. there's always somebody out yeah. there on the corner. Or... Yeah, and you say, well, how do I know they're not just scamming me? Well, that's up to God. That's up to God, yeah. You yeah. know, you just, if you feel like that's somebody you want to help, why well, help them, you know? And if they're scamming you, well, then that's between him and God or her and God, whatever. But um, yeah. if you're doing what you feel like God's calling you to do, then that's that's all that really matters. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, let's jump back into First John here. We're, uh, I think, a little way more than halfway through chapter uh, 3. Hopefully, maybe we can finish it today. But okay. we... Uh, talked last time about the fact that um, if we live in hate, we hate our brother and sister, says um, we're a murderer. Uh -huh. Remember Jesus said, you know, you've heard it said that you shall not commit murder, but I say do you. Whoever hates his brother or sister has already committed murder in his heart. And so uh, he says no murderer uh, has eternal life residing in him in other words if we continue hating that's talking about somebody that continues murdering and again that's not just talking about somebody that actually kills somebody but but continue hating if you hold that hate in your heart and you know the worst part is the person that gets hurt the most when you hate somebody when you hold grudges and bitterness in your heart the person that gets hurt the most is the one that's doing the hating because it just eats them up inside. It affects them physically and it affects them spiritually. I mean, you've probably heard doctors say that people that have a lot of unforgiveness and hate and bitterness, it affects their physical health, uh, it affects your mental health, but it's, it affects you spiritually too because it separates you from God when you live in hate and, and unforgiveness. And uh, the person that, that you hate or hold unforgiveness toward, they might not even know you hate them. They might not even know you're holding unforgiveness towards them. And uh, it doesn't bother them at all, but it's eating you up. And so uh, just we need to be able to forgive. And again, you know, as we talked about last time, sometimes you feel like, well, they don't deserve forgiveness. Well, guess what? You don't either. You don't deserve forgiveness from God for your sins, but he gave it anyway because of what Jesus did. And so just because people don't deserve our forgiveness or if they're not asking for it, that doesn't mean we don't give it. Because if we don't get rid of that, then we're the ones that, that wind up getting hurt. True? 
Yes. All right. Let's go on here. We, I think, left off with verse 16 last time. Uh, so let's read a few verses here. Verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Yeah. Oh, here's a good, about good love. Yeah, here's a good place here to find out what love is. Yes. Jesus, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And we ought <clears throat> to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother and sister in need but has no pity on them, yeah. how can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, uh, but with actions and in truth. Mm -hmm. We would not love only with words or speech, but with actions and truth. Yeah. So it says, this is how we know what love is. How? The example Jesus set for us. He laid down his, laid life, down his life for us. And he says, we ought to do the same thing. We ought to lay down our lives. Yeah. Oh, does that mean we have to die for our brothers? Just, no, that just means we put down our, our own selfish desires uh, to, to help others, yeah. to be beneficial to other mm -hmm. people. He says, if we have the material possessions and we see somebody else in need, uh, but we have no pity on them, we have no uh, desire at all to help them. He says, how can the love of God be in us? If you see somebody really hurting, and of course here he's talking about a brother or sister, um, talking, you know, basically about Christians, but, you know, we see other people that aren't Christians that we see in need, and if we can just see, look at them and think, well, that's their problem. You know, I got mine. They're just going to have to figure out a way to get their own. And mm -hmm. says, then how can the love of God be in that person? How, how can you say you love if you're not willing to help? All right, love, if you really love, I think it's required that you, you be willing to help people. Yeah. And he says, let us not love with word and uh, words or speech, but with actions and in truth. So how do we show our love? Well, it's certainly we can show love with, uh, mm -hmm. with words, uh, but even more with our actions. Yeah. When we see people in need and we have the, the means to help, whether it's with money or if they need groceries, buy them groceries or... Mm -hmm. uh, you see kids in need, you know, buy, you know, buy them something for Christmas. Uh -huh. uh, there's so many different ways that yeah. we can help. Another, another <clears throat> word uh, the Bible uses is works. Um, that they'll know you by your works. <clears throat> yeah. You show your faith by your works. Yeah. We're not saved by our works, but if we have faith in God, yeah. then, then our works are going to show it. Yeah. That's what James talked so. about. You know, when James talks about uh, faith without works, he's talking about people claim to have faith, you know, mm -hmm. faith in God, and yet uh, they're, they're afraid to help others because they might come up short. No, I can't help them because I might need that money. I might need that someday. Yeah. <clears throat> we don't really trust God. If we have it right now and we see a person in need, and if we really trust God, say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna help that person yeah. and, and I just believe that if I'm if I need that sometime in the future, God's gonna supply it For to sure. me. I think it's in Proverbs where it says, If we uh give to the poor, we're lending to God and he always repays. He does. So we don't have to worry about coming up short because we've helped somebody too much, because we've given too much. As long as we're being obedient to what God says, but um, love, love is is actually it's an action. Yeah, it's not just a feeling. There may be feelings that come with it, but it first of all, it's a decision. We decide to love somebody. We decide to to live in love, and and uh, then it's an action. We do that. We uh, show our our love by our actions. And that's by what helping it says people. In 1 Corinthians 13. Yeah, read 1 Corinthians 13. That's yeah. a 
that's a good place to talk about what love is. That's right. Uh, like read some of that. I don't okay. know if you want to read the whole thing, but uh, read Let's part see. of it anyway. Oh, down here it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it does not, it's not proud. It does not dis, dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. <laughs> yeah. I like that part, not self-seeking. Yeah, I like you that. You know, too. love uh, is not concerned so much about ourselves, but it's concerned about others. You know, we talked about this earlier when Paul, or, uh, John uh, talked about, you know, first, uh, this is an old commandment, and said, but it's a new commandment. Well, uh, the old commandment was we're to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. But Jesus said, we're to love not only our neighbor, but we're to love our enemy. And we're to love them as Jesus loved us. So, that means that we love beyond what we love ourselves. In other words, we're willing to give ourselves up for others, yes. give ourselves up uh, our own desires. And, and love, and love doesn't keep record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices <laughs> with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. Always hopes. Always preserves. Love never fails. Never fails. Like but it that. doesn't keep a record of wrongs. No, it doesn't. That's going back to what he's talking about in forgiveness. Yeah. You know, some of us are good about keeping records of <clears throat> what people have done to us. Yeah. I've had people tell me about stuff that happened to them years ago, something somebody did to them, and they still have grudges towards that mm -hmm. person or whatever. And, It'll and, really uh, mess up a marriage, too. Well, that's true, yeah. yeah. You... Uh, you, you Start bringing up stuff from the past. Uh -huh. That's a good way to, to really cause a, a rift in a, in a relationship, yeah, a right. marriage Isn't or a friendship. Yeah. friendship. yeah, And you start, uh, you know, you get upset over one thing and pretty soon you start, well, I remember when you did this and then you said <laughs> that and then you did this. And, you know, and pretty soon yeah. we're bringing up all these old things. And mm -hmm. love doesn't keep records. No, it doesn't and, hold grudges. And thank God. He doesn't keep records either. Thank he said, you, when Jesus. we've asked for forgiveness for our sins, he removes them as far as the east is from the west. Yes. He doesn't he doesn't have a computer up there with all the list of our you know, of our <laughs> sins. At least no, for those of us that, that have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, have asked uh, have received his forgiveness, uh, he just they're gone. They're deleted. Yes. <laughs> they're deleted off that computer. And so, again, that's, uh, where is it? I forget where the scripture is, but it says love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. You know, we don't, we don't hold those sins. We don't hold those grudges against people. <clears throat> Let's go on here. Verse okay. 19. This is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. This is how. How do we know? Because we love. We show our love, not just, again, in words, but also in actions. That's right. So if our heart condemn us, we know that God's greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. If our Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. Yes. And this is his command, to believe in the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as he commanded us. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him, and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the Spirit he gave us. So this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. Again, by love by showing our love and actions, by giving up uh, our own desires. Uh, Jesus said, what does, it, what does it do to gain the whole world and yet lose, lose our soul? And so hoarding things up, keeping everything for ourselves, uh, it might seem like the way of the world, you know, or the right way in the world, but it's not the right way with God. That's that's the way to, to lose your peace and to lose yeah. your soul even. 
He says, if our hearts condemn us, we know God's greater than our hearts. Romans, uh, was it Romans 8? says, there, therefore, no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. Again, if we've accepted the, the Lord as our Savior, uh, when, when the devil tries to condemn us, uh, we, don't, we don't believe that. We don't come, you know, we don't fall into his trap and think, well, you know, God's holding that against me. No, not if you've confessed it as sin and asked God to forgive you. Uh, God's not condemning you. No. And so don't let your heart condemn you. God's greater than our hearts. Yes, he is. And, and he knows everything. Um, you know, we've heard that expression a lot of times, you know, to follow follow your heart. Well, and then, well, another that's scripture also movies. says that, yeah, that's in the movies. <laughs> but uh, the Bible talks about the fact that our hearts are, are wicked, you know, yeah. and of course that's talking about the un, un uh, regenerated person. Mm -hmm. But uh, it depends on the condition of our heart, whether we follow our heart yeah. or not. You know, yeah. some people, their yeah. hearts are, uh, are selfish, and so if they follow their heart, they're going to be selfish. But mainly we need to follow the Word of God. Yes. If our heart's in agreement with the Word of God, then great. You can follow your heart. But if your heart's not in agreement with the Word of God and telling you to do things mm -hmm. that are contrary to the Word of God, then, then don't listen to your heart. Yeah. And it says... So, if our hearts don't condemn us, we have confidence before God. Um, again, that's uh, if you're walking with him. Now, some people that are outside the Lord, that are, you know, living a, 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 just a wicked life, their hearts don't condemn them. They just figure, oh, everything's right, all right, you know, I can just do whatever I want and it doesn't make any difference. And so we have to be careful when we, we take this just, you know, out of context and say, well, my heart's not condemning me. I'm doing all these things that uh, other people may think is wrong. But to me, I don't think they're wrong. You know, that's just, that's just your opinion. Well, if you're doing things that are contrary to the Word of God, um, not that we had come under con con condemnation, but we should be coming under conviction. Mm -hmm. If we're a born-again believer, there should be conviction that, hey, this is not the right thing. But if our heart doesn't condemn us, in other words, if, if we know we're doing the right thing, we know we're doing what God told us to do, uh, then we have confidence. And we receive from him anything we ask. Wow, that means I can just ask for anything I want. I want a new, I want a mansion. Yeah. I want a big car. And I want, no, that's not what he's talking yeah. about. You know, again, back in uh, John's gospel, and uh, what is it, verse, chapter 14 or 15, somewhere along there, uh, he says, if we abide in him and he abides in us, we can ask what we will and he'll, and it'll be given to us. We're talking about when we're, living in the word when the word yeah. lives in us when jesus lives in us and yes. we're walking according to his uh his, his plan his will yeah. yeah we're not going to be asking for a lot of selfish things when the holy spirit's guiding our life we're going to be asking for those things that are beneficial not only to ourselves but to other to people others, we're yeah. going to be praying for others and asking yeah. for others not just for ourselves yeah. and so again we we can um, take things out of context, you know, and oh man, I can just ask for anything. Well, uh, anything within the will of God. Yeah. Uh, again, I think in later on in First John, I think it's in chapter five, where it says, "If we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us, and yeah. if we know He hears us, and we'll have what we want." So, mm -hmm. got to look at the whole counsel of God. Okay. If we ask anything according to His will uh, and and selfish prayers are not not usually in in the will of god they're all about our own personal interests so we need to be sure that we're 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 asking things that are in line with god's will but you know there's a lot of things that our kids want that we knew we know that if we give them to them it would not be good for them you know it would be 
detrimental to us. You know, if your 10 year old kid wants, wants a car, you know, a real car, uh, you're probably not going to give it to him because you know he's not responsible enough and not old enough to know how to drive yet and he get himself killed or yeah. hurt. Uh, so it's the same thing with God. He's not going to uh, give us things that are harmful to us. And so if we pray in a lot of prayers and not get any answer, um, you know, we need to look at our prayer life. What are we praying for? And of course, I know Sometimes we have to wait. We don't, God doesn't just manifest every answer immediately. Sometimes we have to wait for a period of time. Just like Abraham and Sarah, they waited for 25 years after God gave them the promise uh, before they saw their son. But uh, it, we need to make sure that our prayers are not selfish prayers too, that they're all about us and you know, Lord, help me win the lottery so I can be rich. And, and uh, of course, I'll give you, I'll tithe off of it, Lord. But, uh, you know, that's, that's foolishness. That's <laughs> foolishness, yeah. Okay, and what else? Says, this is his command. Uh, let's see. We receive anything we ask because, okay. We receive everything, uh, receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. Yes. So again, there's a condition it's to receiving condition. anything we ask. We keep his commands, and what is his command? Well, to let the word abide in us, to let Love. Jesus abide in us, to abide in him, to, to walk uprightly, to walk in righteousness, mm -hmm. and do what pleases him. Well, what pleases him? Faith, love, love, love yeah. one another, yes. Uh, Hebrews, uh, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith it's impossible to please God. So mm -hmm. when, we, when we live by faith, when we trust in God, uh, that pleases him. And so uh, it's, again, it's not just, oh, we can we get anything we ask. No, we get anything we ask because we keep his commands and because we do what pleases him, we, we walk in love, we walk in faith. And that pleases him. Yeah. And, and what is his command? He says, well, love one, another. one of his commands is, first of all, to believe in the name of his son, yeah. Jesus Christ. That's, that's a major command. Um, and again, back in John's gospel, he said, what... Uh, what is the work of God? Is to believe in the one he sent, to believe in Jesus. That's the main work of, uh, of being a follower of God is to believe in his son. And also his command is to love one another as he commanded us. Again, in, in the Gospel of John, that's what... Jesus told him, said, this is how they'll know that you're my disciples, That's by right. your love, one for another. another. And so those are two of the commands that he gave and probably two of the major ones, you know, to mm -hmm. believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another. one another. What did Jesus say the two great commandments were? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and to love, love your, your neighbor. neighbor as yourself. And so these both mm -hmm. are incorporated here. To believe in the name of his son Jesus is, is to believe in God and to love him for sending his son and then to love one another. The one who keeps God's commands lives in him and he in them. Again, Jesus talked about this. I mean, yeah, Jesus talked about this. John recorded it in his gospel. You know, if we, uh, if you... Uh, believe on on the one that he sent and he said we'll come and live in you and you'll live in us and this is how we know that he lives in us we know it by the spirit that he gave us by that spirit that resides within us it gives us that assurance that um, everything is everything is right between us and God again not because of what we did or do other than the fact that we accept what Jesus did on the cross for us. We accept his forgiveness. We accept his sacrifice for our sins. And so, uh, 
we're to love in deeds and in actions. Yes. Not just in not just in words. It's easy to talk about love and easy to say, you know, to tell somebody we love them when we're praying for them, but there needs to be actions. There needs to be uh, some kind of actions to show that. Giving, yes. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's end right there. Um, on which verse? On, well, we end, we've read all through chapter 3, so we'll end. We won't start in chapter 4 yet. Okay. Because there it talks about testing the spirits, kind of a uh -huh. different subject. And yes. I, uh, I don't want to get into that because we'd spend a little bit of time with that. So let's just pray. And okay. um, I just encourage you, if you've got any problems with unforgiveness or, or hate in your heart, just give it over to God and just begin by act of faith. Just say, Lord, I forgive that person. Lord, help me to overcome the feelings that I have. And then begin to show love by praying for that person. If there's some way you can help them, uh, then help them out. And, and just just be generous during, not just during this Christmas season. I mean, this is a time when we really think about giving, but this should be all year round, not just not just a few weeks out of the year, but the whole year. God wants us to express our love in our giving and in our sharing with others. So, Father, we thank you that you loved us so much. Even while we were sinners, even while we were uh, alienated from you, even when we didn't even know you existed or believed in you, Lord, yet you loved us enough. You sent your son to die for us, Father. And, and Lord, because you are willing to do that, you are willing to forgive us, Lord, and willing to send your son uh, to, to be a sacrifice for our sins, Lord, uh, we need to be willing to forgive others, Lord, be willing to, to let go of our hatred, to let go of our bitterness and grudges, Father, and forgive people, Father, just as uh, uh, you forgave even when we didn't deserve it, Lord. We need to forgive when, when others may not deserve it, Father. And again, you said this is love, that, uh, that Jesus gave his life for us, Father. And, and you expect us to do the same, Lord, to give our life for others. Not, not that we die and go to a cross like Jesus did, Lord, but that we give up our own selfish desires to help others, Father, to to be generous towards others, to share with others, Father. So just do a special work in the heart of every person that's listening, yes, Father. Lord. Give them a forgiving heart, a loving heart, Father, yes, and just help them to continue to grow in, in that love, Father, and to grow closer to you, Father, and to let the Holy Spirit just truly be powerful in them, Lord, and, and, and show them, Lord, the, the way to... Uh, to peace in their lives, Father. And Lord, we just uh, thank you, Lord, for as we come up to this time of year when we, we especially think about the coming of your Son on, on this earth, Lord. That, uh, that's uh, such a special time, Father, and we're so thankful. We're so grateful, Father, and help us never to forget the real reason for this time of year, the real reason for, for the, the holiday that we're celebrating yes. now, Lord. That Jesus came to this earth and lived a, a life without sin and yet went to the cross to pay the price, took the sin of ev all the world, Lord, uh, that we might receive his righteousness, Father. So bless your people, Father, and we just give you praise and thanks, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, we will see you again next week, hopefully. And. Uh, just, Everybody stay well. That's right. Yeah, just uh, well pray that everybody be well this day. season. Don't want anybody sick during this time of year. So be blessed, and we'll see you next week.